Hi, I'm Persia. And I'm Joey. And you are watching our very special Addictive Daughter Skype Nuggets. It is very special indeed. We've got our old and lovely friend Katie Delbelt with us today. Hello, Katie. Hi, guys. So happy to be here with you guys, always. We are delighted to have you. So Katie is a blogger, author, and podcast extraordinaire. <laughs> um, and she's the founder of katiedalbelt.com. And she's also, and really excitingly, got a book out right now called Let It Out, A Journey Through Journaling. Yes. She does. So Katie, this is so exciting. Um, and we're obviously really proud of you and um, excited to read the book, most importantly. Um, so what we'd love to know is what, what inspired you to write this book? What, why journaling? So I was, this was a couple of years ago and I was going through something in my life, like how most of us find this sort of work. And for me, I was healing an eating disorder. So I was surrounded by coaches and therapists and mentors, but for whatever reason, I had like wandered into a bookshop and I had a gift card. And I remember being like, I think I'm going to buy that journal over there. That's really cute. And I just, no one told me to. I just bought this journal and I started writing in it. And I just started writing about my feelings and what was going on in my head. And it helped me sort through all the different voices in my mind and figure out which ones I wanted to listen to and which ones were just like old, limiting, negative beliefs that I was holding on to. And it felt so cathartic to me. So that was an experience I had. And then I just kept journaling. And I realized that even though I was surrounded by all these mentors, I really needed to become my own mentor. And that's what journaling allowed me to do. And so since it had such a positive effect on me, because I, of, I often say this, but I don't know what I'm thinking or how I'm feeling unless I'm writing. It's a way for me to process the world. So I just wanted to share it. I wanted to share it with other people. And I got a lot of resistance to it whenever I would be like, well, maybe try journaling about what's going on. And people would be like, well, I'm not a writer. I wouldn't have anything to say. I don't have time for that. And I realized that I'm not a writer either. And I just did it. I just started. And people needed some more hand-holding. And so that's what this book is. It's 55 journaling exercises in all different areas of life. So it's broken up into different categories, tools to get organized, tools to feel, tools to heal, tools to reveal. And each section starts with like a personal essay from me kind of explaining why I chose to have this section of tools. And, and again, the process of journaling was just so cathartic to me. It was like having a conversation with a really non-judgmental best friend and that like unloading on them. But I was doing that with myself and I was processing things as they came up. So I just wanted to share that. And, and that's how the book came to be. Brilliant. Actually, you said something there that was really nice. It's like, it's like you, it enabled you to become your own best friend. Yeah. And you were saying how you had all those like coaches and therapists around, which is great, you know, to have, and also friends to have that support. But yeah. sometimes when you're told so many different things by different people, you, you then like, I don't know what I think about it. And journaling yeah. can help you to access that, that truth for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I had no self-awareness at the time. You know, I didn't really know who I was and I was putting so much pressure on my physical body to look a certain way and be a certain way that I didn't think that I had any worth beyond that. And I had to get to know myself. I had to figure out who I was beyond just my physical body and get to know myself. And journaling was a way for me to cultivate that self-awareness. And it's still something that I turn to in all my crucial moments, like a security blanket to just kind of lean on and sort out what's going on in my mind. That's great. Okay, so I've got a question yeah. for you because I think there'll be a lot of people who – maybe have never journaled before and, and don't know exactly what it is. Can I ask you, what is the difference between journaling and keeping a diary? Is there a difference? I is mean, I don't know, like, word-wise what, like, what people think journaling means, but I think you're right. Like, a lot of times that word is just like, oh, so you're just sitting and writing in your diary what happened during the day. And I think that can probably be really cathartic too, but the type of journaling that I really think of is there's so many different ways you can do it, but it's really asking yourself a good question and then getting a good answer from your intuition. It's a way to kind of sort through all the muck that's in our mind and kind of like skim the pond, you know, to get to the clear water, the, like the clear thought forms underneath all of that. And when you let it out, like that's the title of my book, when you let it out in your journal and just kind of get all of that gunk out of your mind, like the things you've been thinking on repeat, 
Mm -hmm. We have 60,000 thoughts a day. So sometimes if you can let out some of those ones you've been thinking on repeat over and over again, just automatically on autopilot, if you can get them out onto the page, you can kind of see and sort through them and it can be soothing. I find that even if my journaling starts out really negative, it can kind of, you see as it goes down the page, it starts to improve. I start to self-soothe. And so I think that's the difference between just writing like what happened in your day, word for word. That's what I think of with a diary. And I think journaling is more about writing how you felt about what happened or how you're feeling in general or, you know, doing a a specific exercise where you're asking yourself a question and you're allowing your intuition to speak to you. Fantastic. And I think that's what's so great about your book is that you are giving readers tangible exercises and guidance so they have structure with it as well, which is incredible. Okay, so what we would like from you today is three tips for beginners. So for people who have never journaled before, what would you suggest as a starting point to begin the journaling process? Okay, cool. This is awesome. So the first part of my book is the user manual where I like explain how to get started with this stuff. And and basically what I say in that, the first step is to just start. It's like anything else. Like you can talk about it and think about it and think it might be a good idea and think you maybe want to do it, but just do it. Just try it. You know, you don't, it's not expensive. Anybody can do it. I always say that, you know, if you can send a text, if you can write an email, you can journal. This type of writing is innate to us as humans. It's writing how you speak. It's just having a conversation with yourself. It's having an inner dialogue with yourself on the page. So just start. You know, you can even voice journal. You can even hold up your phone to your ear so it doesn't look like you're a crazy person as you're walking down the street. And just journal into your phone if that feels most comfortable to you. You can do it on a legal pad while you're, you know, in bed. Or you can have a really beautiful journal. But just just start. Just try it. Just try it. You know, you just said something there that, like, I ha- I hadn't actually thought of this before, but often if I've got a problem or so I'm stressing over something, I'll ring Joey up and she her phone goes yeah. to voicemail yeah. and I'll leave probably sometimes something like an eight minute. Well, I get I always get cut off because I leave such long rambly voicemails. <laughs> but by the end of it, I've answered my own question. Right? <laughs> Blah. You and that's actually really, it, it for me that because I do like to just fucking talk so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is a really interesting tool for people though as well. I'd never thought of doing that, but mm-hmm. actually you can do it as a vocal thing if if that kind of really works for you. Yeah, as well. Yeah. And sometimes like you like I've had times where I will voice journal just because I can't be bothered. Like I'm so in it that I like cannot even be bothered to get out my pen. You know, and then maybe I, I process it through writing later on, but. It's really important to just get it out of your head sometimes. And, you know, I just had an experience yesterday where I felt funky about something. And the first thing I did was pick up the phone and called a friend, like a soul sister or friend, and just like let it out. And I felt so much better after. And not that that's not fantastic to do, but sometimes we can't always do that. Sometimes they don't pick up the phone or after we leave the message, we still need to sort through it. Or sometimes it's empowering to do that for yourself and journaling is a really great way to be able to do that so then that way you know sometimes you can sort through it and like you said Persia like answer your own question on the page so then when you do speak to Joey you can talk about other things or get help yeah. deeper even because you have more self-awareness and you, you worked through something so that's the first tip yeah. is to just start and the Brilliant. second tip is to not judge yourself So don't go back and edit. Don't go back and read it as you're doing it. Just get it all out on the page. And then you can process it. You can do whatever you want. But really don't hold anything back. You know, if you're writing like you're writing something someone's going to read, you'll write very differently if you're just writing something for yourself. Don't worry about, don't judge yourself as you're writing. That's the tip. Just get it out. Let it out, as the book says. And then you can go from there. But if you don't just do it with this really non-judgmental attitude, it's it's pointless. You're doing something, but maybe that's diary. You're just writing, but it, it won't have that catharsis, that actual getting your real deep thoughts, the things that you're afraid to tell someone. And that's what, you know, I say in the book that journaling can be free therapy. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's almost okay. like, exactly, it's self-therapy because there are things that I found that I had to write about in my journal before I could even talk to with someone super safe, like a therapist, like a coach, like a mentor, that, again, I think all of those things are great, like 
we're all coaches here and like we love therapy and I love it as much as the next guy. However, there are things that are like too safe, too special that I'm afraid to be that vulnerable with someone. And first I need to process it on my own in my journal and then maybe I can bring it to therapy or bring it to my coach. And then I even might be able to explain it more clearly and get the get more clear of a help or a directive from someone else, from a friend, from a mentor, from a therapist, if I'd first kind of gone through it on my own. So you have to be that vulnerable, that real, that open with yourself and not hold anything back. And you can do that when it's just you more so than you can do with another person because with everyone, there's that slight bit of of judgment that, that might seep in. So that's the next tool. Brilliant. And tip three? And then tip number three is just to find some sort of consistency with it. You know, it's it's fine to be like an SOS journaler, like when something's going wrong in your life, like maybe you pick up your journal. But I relate to that. That's me. Yeah, but it's also great to to have some sort of consistent practice where every maybe it's not every day, but every week you take some time to process what's going on in your life. Like I usually spend some time on Sundays just being like how am I feeling today? And just kind of take inventory, ask myself a good question, see the answer that comes up and, and really take that inventory. So that's really helpful. Yeah, I find the first thing in the morning, because I think so much of the time we don't actually know how we're feeling. Exactly. Sometimes I, I, I ask myself, how am I feeling? I'm like, I have no idea. And journaling helps you to kind of work that out. It really I does. Find. Yeah. 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 Okay, so let me recap quickly. So the three tips were number one, just start. Number two, don't judge yourself or the journaling that you're doing. And number three is try and find some sort of consistency or routine that works for you. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And for the last one, don't judge yourself. You know, if you miss a day, don't stop doing it all together. Just, just keep going. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we, um, Katie, we always love to give um, our viewers uh, something called the to-do of today, something that they can... Uh, like go and put into practice so that they can engage with this and actually experience the benefits for themselves. So what would you like to get them to do today? Cool. I'm going to keep this quick. I want to focus on gratitude and gratitude journaling is something that all three of us are passionate about and do every single day. And we've done for about what, like three years since I first met you guys and you guys came on my podcast and we've been doing a gratitude journaling thing together really on our phones. We've been we have a group that's called our like gratitude group and we put in there three things every day that we're grateful for. And we were just talking before this that it kind of needed a refresh. So here's that refresh. So something I heard that is really beneficial with gratitude and we might actually have been doing gratitude wrong if you're just listing out the things that you're grateful for. This new practice says just write out one thing that you're grateful for and write out all the reasons why you're grateful for it. So maybe it's like, I'm grateful for my boyfriend because he makes amazing pancakes and he does really great with the cuddles and he's really nice or something, right? Like you write out the three things why you're grateful for the one thing. And that can mm-hmm. actually be more powerful because it helps you get the feeling behind the gratitude. You're not mm-hmm. just listing things off because it's like a to-do of your day. So that's mm-hmm. one of the exercises in my book is, is all about gratitude. And I think all gratitude practices are great. I don't think like what we've been doing for three years is bad by any means, but I think it's worth trying this new thing. So my to-do of yeah. the day for everyone listening is write in the comments below, write down one thing you're grateful for, and then list out three reasons why you're grateful for that one thing. And the three of us are going to do it right after this. Ah, that's so exciting. I love it. Just spice it up a bit. Yeah. I think you're, everyone's really used to the regular, well, a lot of people are used to the regular gratitude practice. But, um, hello? Sorry, I just got a call then. <laughs> I don't know if I came popular. through. Popular. That's so popular. I'm going to continue. Right. All the friends that just keep bringing me. Um, yeah, no, but that's really nice, Katie. That's a really nice, a different way of looking at it. I can't wait to start. Me too. Awesome. So, okay. Um, where can people find you if they like what they've seen in the video and they're excited about buying your book, which is available on Amazon? Yes, Amazon, and it's in the UK and in the US and stores. Oh, so we'll put excited. A link below the video. Yeah, yeah we'll cool. Awesome. Yeah, and then my website is katiedelbat.com. And yeah. 
If you want to keep in touch, the best way to do it is really to sign up for my email list. And when you do, you get my quick start guide to living in wellness wonderland. And that comes right to your email box. And yeah, and I'm just at Katie Delva on all social media, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, the whole game. Fantastic. Great. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed this Skype nugget as much as we have. Um, if you have, please do like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this with anyone that you think will also like it. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like a life nugget and a weekly dose of happiness and motivation straight to your inbox, sign up at addictivedaughter.com and join us and thousands of others in getting addicted to the good stuff today.